we are going to start with a new topic that is topic 5, it is on control scheme. Now, we have seen starting from the kinematics like how to derive the expression for the joint torque and at each of the robotic joint we put a motor and this particular motor is going to supply that particular the torque. We generally use the DC motor and this particular DC motor is connected at each of the robotic joint and here the torque generated that is proportional to the, the armature current. Now, if you see the motor torque that is denoted by say tau m and the armature current is I a. So, tau m is proportional to I a that is the armature current and this can be written as. Uh, so, this can be written as your tau equals to k m multiplied by I a. Now, this particular k m is nothing but the constant of proportionality. So, this is nothing but the constant of proportionality and this is also known as your the motor constant. So, this is also known as the motor constant. So, this tau m is nothing but k m multiplied by i a. Now, here actually what you will have to do is at each of the robotic joint we will have to generate this particular tau that is the torque uh, as a function of time. For example, if I plot for E particular robotic joint, so this is the joint torque. So, this particular joint torque as a function of time, so that you will have to generate. Now, supposing that this particular distribution is something like this, a very random distribution I have considered and at the same time what you will have to ensure is the joint, uh, the, the, the angle that is theta as a function of time. So, there must be some continuous curve something like this and at the same time the first time derivative of theta that is your theta dot as a function of time and your theta double dot that is acceleration as a function of time. So, some plot you will have to find out, some distribution you will have to find out. Then how to ensure that this particular the motor, the DC motor is going to generate this amount of torque with time. This is what is required if I want to uh, create some angular displacement at the robotic joint uh, in a particular the cycle time. So, we will have to ultimately generate this particular theta as a function of time, theta dot as a function of time, theta double dot as a function of time. Now, I am just going to discuss how to, how to ensure that this particular DC motor is going to generate. So, this torque uh, within this cycle time. Now, let us see how to how to generate this particular torque. Now, to generate this particular torque, let me uh, once again go back to the expression of the joint torque, which we have already discussed while discussing the, the dynamics that this particular joint torque tau is nothing but d theta theta double dot plus h theta theta dot plus c theta. Now, I have already discussed that this is nothing but the inertia term this is Coriolis and centrifugal term and this is the gravity term and if I add the friction term. So, these friction terms uh, is to be added here which I am not adding for simplicity, but we can add this particular the friction term. Now, this particular torque has to be generated by the, the motor. So, how to generate that I am going to discuss. Now, to generate this particular torque, so what you will have to do is, so you will have to consider a particular control scheme, we will have to take the help of a control scheme. Now, here uh, if you see the literature, we have got a few very popular the control scheme and out of all such control scheme, this is the most important one and this is known as the partition control scheme. Now, here in partition control scheme what we do is the torque to be generated that is tau that is distributed that is divided into two parts. 
one is nothing but alpha into tau prime. So, this is one part and another is the, the beta. Now, if you see that expression of the joint torque, so this h theta theta dot plus c theta plus f of theta theta dot. So, this particular terms taken together we call it beta and then, uh, then alpha is nothing but d theta, d theta is nothing but that inertia terms okay, and alpha prime so, or this particular tau prime that will have to generate with the help of a controller. Now, each of this particular motor is having its own controller. Now, let us try to explain how can it generate. So, that particular tau prime with the help of its controller and this particular controller is inbuilt. So, let us try to explain that how to generate that particular the required tau prime. Now, this tau prime uh, can be written as your theta d double dot plus k p into e plus k d into e dot if I consider p d control law. Now, p d control law means proportional derivative control law. So, proportional proportional derivative control law derivative control law that is called the p d control law. Now, here I am using uh, two symbols, so, one is called this k p. Now, k p is nothing but actually the proportionality gain. So, this is nothing but proportionality gain value and this k d is nothing but the derivative gain value, derivative gain, derivative gain. Now, here I am also using the terms like E, E is nothing but the error and that is the difference between the desired theta and the theta which is uh, actually created with the help of the motor. So, this is nothing but theta and this particular difference is nothing but the error E and E dot that is your that, that rate of change of this particular error. Or, or, or we can do something like this, we can find out the deviation or the difference between the angular the, the, the velocity that is theta d dot minus theta dot. So, this is nothing but actually what we do is, so this is the desired angular velocity and this is the actually obtained angular velocity and this particular difference is nothing but is your e dot. And what is this theta d double dot? theta d double dot is nothing but the desired acceleration. So, this is nothing but the desired acceleration. Okay. Now, let us see how to generate this particular the tau prime using this p d control law. Now, before I go for that uh, let me just uh, tell you that if I use p i d controller in place of the p d controller then tau prime will become equal to theta d double dot plus k p into e plus k i into integration e d t plus k d e dot for the p i d controller that is proportional integral derivative controller. So, p stands for proportional, i stands for integral. So, this is integral. So, proportional integral and derivative control law and here we are adding one extra term that is your k i multiplied by your that integration e d t. Now, here this k i is nothing but your integral grain. So, this is nothing but integral gain value. Okay. Now, the values for this particular k p, k i and k d are in fact can be determined mathematically also and there is one well known method that is called uh, Ziegler Nichols rule that is called Ziegler Nichols rule. Now, using this Ziegler Nichols rule we can find out what should be the numerical value for this particular k p, k i and k d. Now, once we have determined the values for this k p, k i and k d, 
those values are kept constant, those are not altered. So, the, uh, using this Ziegler's Nichols method, we can find out all such k p, k i and k d values and once you have got that, now I can implement. So, this particular the tau prime. Now, let us see how to implement. So, this particular your uh, how to get this particular tau prime. Now, let us see the control uh, architecture and this is the block diagram of the control architecture. Now, this particular d theta as I mentioned. So, this is nothing but is your uh, alpha and this tau as you mentioned according to this partition control rule, this is alpha tau prime plus beta. So, alpha is nothing but is your d theta and this particular thing whatever you have written here h theta theta dot c theta plus f theta theta dot this is nothing but the beta. Okay. So, this is alpha, this is beta, now I will have to generate this particular the tau prime. Now, the way it is done is as follows, we take the help of some sort of the closed loop control system. So, initially there could be some error, but this particular error will be compensated. Now, here I have mentioned theta d double dot that is nothing but the desired acceleration, then comes your theta d dot that is the desired velocity and theta d that is nothing but the desired uh, uh, your the displacement or the angular displacement. Now, here with the help of this we are just going to uh, generate this particular the tau prime. Let us see how to generate this particular tau prime. Supposing that say this is the summing junction say I am passing so, this particular the tau prime. Now, how to determine this particular tau prime according to this PD control rule? Now, as I have discussed that this particular the P according to the PD control rule. So, this particular tau prime is nothing but E dot multiplied by k d plus your this k p multiplied by E plus theta d double dot. So, let me write it here. So, this particular tau prime is nothing but theta d double dot. Now, this is the summing junction and we can see I am putting 3 such plus sign here. So, theta d double dot is coming from there plus k p multiplied by the error. So, k p multiplied by the error. So, this particular thing next is your k d multiplied by e dot. So, this k d multiplied by e dot. So, those things are summed up here and that is nothing but is your tau prime. And once you have got this particular tau prime, we multiply tau prime by alpha. So, I will be getting alpha tau prime plus beta. So, I will be getting the complete tau. Now, here we have got a load. Load means this is the mechanical load. So, if it is a robot, now actually the load to be carried to generate that particular the angular displacement that is nothing but the, the mechanical load. And supposing that I am using a DC motor, DC motor is generating this particular the torque that means it is generating theta theta dot at least theta dot you forget about theta double dot for the time being. So, the, the moment I am just applying I am just putting that particular motor on. So, what will happen is it will try to generate this particular the torque that means your the physically how to how to realize that the torque has been implemented we will be getting that theta theta dot and all such things. And using some sensor we can measure this particular theta and theta dot. How to measure theta and theta dot that I will be discussing after some time. Now, supposing that we are able to measure so, this particular theta and theta dot. So, this theta and theta dot, so that will be brought here to this junction for the purpose of comparison. So, theta will be brought here for the purpose of comparison with theta d that is the desired theta and I will be getting this particular error and this error will be multiplied by k p and it will be added here. Similarly, whatever theta dot we are getting that we can measure. So, this will be brought here for the purpose of comparison at this particular the summing junction and it will be compared with your theta 
d dot and we will be getting this e dot and this e dot is multiplied by k d and that is also be summed up here and I will be getting this particular the tau prime. <coughs> so, this process will go on and go on. So, in the first cycle we may not get the accurate theta and theta dot, but as I told that we are going to use the closed loop control system. So, there will be error compensation and at this particular robotic joint we are going to generate. So, this particular theta theta dot accurately as a function of time and that is why as I mentioned that we will be getting that theta as a function of time theta dot as a function of time and of course, we will be getting theta double dot as a function of time. Okay. So, we will be getting some uh, some some uh, distribution here. Okay. So, this particular joint torque will be realized in the form of theta theta dot and theta double dot. Okay. So, this is the way actually we can generate the desired motion at the robotic joint with the help of your the DC motor, but this particular DC motor is having some loss. So, whenever we try to calculate the power rating uh, for this particular DC motor which we are going to put. So, that particular loss we will have to consider. Now, if I know the torque history and if I know this particular your theta dot as a function of time. So, very easily we can find out what should be the, the power rating and if I know this particular power rating. So, we can prepare the specification of this particular the motor which I am going to put at the, the robotic joint, but as I told while preparing the specification we will have to consider that one is the torque required and another is the, the loss of torque and this particular loss of torque is generally uh, we try to calculate loss of torque is nothing but k tau square. So, whatever torque is required to generate this theta theta dot and theta double dot and all such things after that I will have to add this particular the loss that is k tau square tau is nothing but the torque and k is a constant generally we consider a small value for the DC motor. So, 0 0.025 or so and we try to find out this particular loss and then we uh, decide what should be the power rating for this particular the motor. So, this is the way actually we control uh, the different joints of the, the robots with the help of DC motor. For example, say if you consider the Puma the way we control Puma. So, here I am just going to discuss briefly uh, the control architecture for this particular Puma that is a programmable universal machine for assembly. Now, here there are 6 joints all 6 are rotary joints and at each of the joint actually we have got this type of the control system. So, if you see the control architecture for each of these particular joint. So, this is actually the block diagram for the control architecture for a e particular the joint. Now, here you can see that we have got that 6503 microprocessor. So, to control a particular joint. So, I have got a motor and to control that actually we use this type of control architecture or the control scheme. So, we have got the microprocessor here then this is digital to analog that conversion then we have got the current amplifier because this armature current is going to enter and we will be getting the joint torque and this torque will be generated and it will be realized in the form of your theta as a function of time that is the joint angle. Now, here I am using one encoder. So, this particular encoder optical encoder is nothing but the feedback device. Now, with the help of this optical encoder we can determine what should be the joint angle and so this particular this is compared with the desired value. So, if there is any such error, so that particular error will be amplified here and we will be getting some current here armature current and once again it will generate and this particular error will be compensated. So, at each of the robotic joint we will be getting very accurate movement with the help of this particular the, the motor. Now, here for this Puma there are 6 motors. Now, this is the control scheme for a particular the joint. 
Similarly, for the second joint, I have got another such control scheme, third joint, fourth joint, fifth and sixth joint and all such movement uh, of the joints that will be controlled by one centralized computer and that is your the master control computer. So, here to control this particular Puma, we have got one controller or the director and we can use one master control computer. Uh, uh, so, with the help of this master control computer, the all the movement of all the joints uh, actually it can be the control. So, this is the way actually we control this particular the Puma. Now, here so till now whatever I have discussed. So, let me tell you in short like your till now starting from the kinematics. So, we have discussed how to carry out the dynamic analysis and we have seen how to generate that particular the torque with the help of your say DC motor and the motor will be equipped with uh, with one controller and generally we use either PID controller or PI controller or PD controller. And, and once we know the gain values of this particular controller, so we can control the movement at the different robotic joint. So, till now actually the, the, the robot is ready and we have already discussed how to teach a particular robot. So, if I just want to give a task to the, the robot, so we are in a position to give task to the robot and the robot will try to follow that and try to uh, perform that particular the task. So, till now, so whatever we have discussed is this, but one thing we have not yet discussed can a robot take decision? How can you make the robot capable of taking decision? So, that particular thing we have not yet discussed. That means, how to make a robot intelligent, how to make a robot autonomous, what do you mean by robot intelligence? Those things we have not yet discussed, we have not yet. Uh, uh, discuss in this course. So, gradually actually we are moving towards that how to make that particular robot intelligent. Now, before I go for that particular intelligent issues in robotics that is actually the fourth module or the last module of robotics. Now, let me tell you what do you mean by an intelligent robot. So, by an intelligent robot actually what you mean is your. So, intelligent robot will be able to take the decision as the situation demand. That means, in a varying situation in a varying environment an intelligent robot should be able to take the, the decision. And there is another term that is called the autonomous robot. Now, this autonomous robot is actually uh, this autonomous robot is actually your uh, a robot which has got the permission to perform as the situation demands. So, if it is having if the robot is having the ability to perform in a varying situation that may be called an intelligent robot. However, if it is, if it is having the permission to perform in the intelligent way or take the decision in the, the varying situation. So, if it is having that permission then only it is called the autonomous robot. Now, all the autonomous robot uh, should be intelligent robot, but all the intelligent robot may not be autonomous. Now, let me take a very simple example just to find out the difference between the intelligent system and an autonomous system. Now, if you see that under one university there are 10 engineering colleges. Now, these engineering colleges will have to follow the rules and regulations of this particular the university. Now, at each of the engineering colleges there could be intelligent people, faculty members, students, but they are unable to take any decision. They will have to depend on the university rules. So, they are intelligent, but they are not autonomous. On the other hand if you see the institutes like IIT, NITs they are intelligent at the same time autonomous. They are having the capability to take the decision and they are having the permission also to take the decision they are intelligent, they are autonomous. In robotics actually we call it is intelligent and autonomous robot. Now, how to design and develop 
an intelligent and autonomous robot. So, those issues actually we will be discussing in details one after another and as I told that we copy everything from human being in robotics, we also try to copy the intelligence. That means, the way we collect information, the way we take the decision, the way we implement all such decision, all such things in fact, we are going to copy in the artificial way in the intelligent and autonomous robot. Now, if you see, uh, we collect information with the help of sensors, but the robot does not have any such sensor. So, we will have to put some sensors. For example, say we will have to put some camera, we will have to put some sensors and with the help of these sensors and cameras, the robot will be able to collect information of the, the environment. And once it has got that particular information, now it will try to do the analysis, try to use some sort of a uh, uh, motion planning algorithm, which I am going to discuss what should be the, the course of action and depending on the course of action. Now, the movement should be there, the movement of the, the, the wheels of the robot should be there or the movement of the different links or the limbs should be there. Now, how to move it? Actually, we take the help of motor, we take the help of controller just to get that particular the motion implemented. So, here actually to make it intelligent, so all such issues we will have to discuss one after another. So, we are going to discuss in details how to make the robot intelligent. Thank you.